validator, you both identify the control to validate and the control that you want to compare it to. Then you specify the kind of validation. Is it equal, less than, less than or equal to, whatever. And you specify um, the type again of data it is. The custom validator is sort of the all bets are off validator, and I'm going to write my own, but I want this code to be sort of incorporated in with the rest of the validations because there's a validation summary that allows me to put all my error messages at a certain point in the screen. Um, there's sort of different styles of validation. I typically like it when the error messages are, are like right by the box where there is an error. But other people like to design their pages where you have the form, then you have a little box underneath it that reports all the errors. All right, six of one, half does the other. You may have your preferences, but um, if you do things with a custom validation, then it's available to be included in that summary. A range validator we saw. That's the one we did an example about. The last one I'm going to talk about is a regular expression validator. Let's just go and put it up there and let's look at some of the choices that you have. With a regular expression validator, you can validate to make sure that the input matches some predefined format. All right, follows some rule and, and matches some predefined format for that kind of data. Can anyone give an example of like a def predefined format for data? Yes. Like a zip code has to be five. Yeah, a zip code. There's rules about how a zip code is formed. Four 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 is not a valid zip code. All right. Um, there's rules for how a telephone number is formatted. All right. There's rules how an email address is formatted, and so on. Yes. Could you use it for like a password? Like say you have to have letters, numbers, a capital, symbols. Regular expressions are incredibly flexible. So you possibly could, or you could write a custom validation uh, for for that to validate that that, that that's legit. All right. If you click on validate expression and little dot, 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 anytime you see an ellipsis in there, it means if you click on it, you'll get more stuff. You see the things that you can validate for. You can validate a French phone number. That's a regular phone number with le in front of it, by the way. French postal code. German phone number. That's a phone number with all the consonants removed. German postal code, internet email address, internet URL, Japanese phone number, and so on down the line. In addition to these, you can make your own regular expressions. All right? I'm not saying it's easy to make regular expressions, but you can make them. This, for example, is a regular expression that would allow for a four-digit, or I'm sorry, not a four-digit, a, a, a U.S. phone number. And I think this allows you to either have the area code or not have the area code. All right. Now, that's kind of complicated. Um, but, for example, if you had a, a part number, let's say, in your organization, and... Every part number maybe fit, fit a certain rule. Maybe it was two characters followed by a four-digit number. All right? You could put in a regular expression to validate that it matched that criteria. Or here at LC, every course is a four-digit or four-character um, like department name, like CISS or ACCT or whatever, followed by a three-digit number, so CISS243. You could create a, vi uh, a regular expression that said it would have to start with four uh, characters and end with a, a three-digit number. Now, that wouldn't prevent someone from typing in A, B, C, D, one, two, three, or something like that. But again, if there was more extensive validation, like it would have to, the, the, the first four have to be a valid department number in some database, then you could do that on the server side. So, you can go in and 
create some validation rule for anything. Now, for your assignment, I don't remember which validation rules that you have to use or which validation controls, but you have to use at least two or three of them. All right. Required field validators in there, I think, regular expressions in there, and compare validator, I think, are the ones that you need to use. Now, the other half of your job is when the user does successfully fill in the form, you might want to do something. All right? That will involve you writing code based on the buttons on click event. Now, we played around with that a little bit last time, but here's a hint for this coming up assignment. One thing that's real useful is to create panels. What's a panel? A panel is something where you can put a chunk of code and treat it like a unit. So I could put that form in a panel. And then, when someone clicks on that form, on the submit button, I could hide that panel. And then, I could maybe show another panel that has the message and pull values from a text box and put it in there. Now the one last thing I will say to, to leave us with is if you remember I said that the validation controls run both on the client and on the server. Therefore for any code that's going to process this form um, I need uh, to check before I do the processing if the form is valid. That way, if server-side validation caught an error, then it won't go ahead and do this. Could you raise the yeah. So in any of your button events, that should be like the first line. Don't do anything if, if the form didn't validate. And again, keep in mind with JavaScript enabled, the validation is going to happen on the client side. This is a sort of a, a safety net just in case the validation occurs on the server side. Um, we'll stop trying to process data that's not valid. So now what we have is something like this. Ah, I started to put the regular expression validator, but I didn't finish it. Let me go and delete it. deleted that. This is the case of, if I look at the I click the form, I get an error. If I put in something here and click the form, it hides the panel. We certainly could pull out the, uh, another panel and display it, and then maybe set some labels based on the values of the different controls. Um, this should give you enough to at least make some progress on your next assignment. If there are questions, uh, we can address them in lab. Uh, and in addition, the lectures next week should clear up any remaining issues that you have. All right. Any questions now? All right. See you over in lab.